Fedora 23. This is Linux for the Linux enthusiasts, the system admins, the people that love to use Linux because they love the kernel, they love managing it, they love tweaking it, they love the upstream projects and their untouched glory, and um, they love configuring it across multiple machines. This is the distribution that has all the latest toys to play with in that space. It's a bit of a tech preview of all the bits and pieces that we'll all be taking for granted in about two years time. So this is Fedora 23 and this is my video review. So most of what we see in Fedora 23 boils down to what is happening in the upstream projects. And really that's what the whole purpose of Fedora is. As we know, it's a bit of a test bed for the upstream Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Um, but here in Fedora 23, it's mostly pretty much the same to a Fedora 22 with a few updated uh, packages and changes and configurations. So first of all, obviously the main story here, at least face level with Fedora 23 workstation is going to be the GNOME 3.18 or 3.18. Um, Basically, this particular desktop environment brings in quite a lot of polish, um, quite a lot of professionalism to the way that it looks, the way that it functions, and uh, and a lot of the, I guess, a lot of the gripes that I had about GNOME Shell in the past have since been solved with some really nice user interface design. And, uh, and overall, while there is quite a bit of white space, I'm going to talk about that in a bit, it is really polished in the way that it looks. A lot of the new applications that come with the GNOME stack also have been updated, such as Nautilus, the file manager, and gedit, the text editor. And while I have noticed quite a rise in system resources with GNOME releases recently, uh, there there is still a lot to be said for how snappy this distribution feels. Um, and yes, that's partly Fedora, but I feel like GNOME as a desktop environment is definitely not shy about using up resources and putting them to work, which as long as resources are being used well, it's all right. So while it is quite resource hungry, as you can see here from what we have, we've got about two gig of RAM being used already, and I've only got a, a few tiny things open, including the screen casting. Um, it is quite snappy and fluid when it comes to actually navigating the desktop itself, launching apps and all of that kind of thing. Now, one of the things that I really want to touch on is the speed with which you can launch stuff via the keyboard launcher now. Even just typing basic fuzzy searches gives you some actually very useful results, both through the applications that you have installed, through settings panels that are available, and also one of my favorites, to apps that you can download through the software manager. Now the software manager in GNOME is also another favorite of mine. And uh, again, it's one of those things that looks polished enough. It is fairly simplistic in its outlook in terms of how it does what it does. But, uh, but I gotta be honest, it still looks polished and, uh, and professional in the way that it does it. Um, and I've really appreciated being able to come in here, find what I'm looking for and simply install it. It gives you just the information you need to know and, uh, and nothing more, nothing less. So that's really nice to see. So installing and managing software on this is snappier, faster, and more professional than um, a lot of the really user-friendly distributions like Ubuntu and that kind of thing. And being able to um, sort through all of these different applications in terms of their rating and in terms of how loved these are in the open source community, as well as some really helpful categories, that's the way that I would want to see open source software categorized. And yeah, a lot of these featured sections have a lot of really good suggestions in terms of quality software that you can install on your Fedora 23 workstation. Some of the other things that I really like about GNOME 3.18 or 3.18 is the notifications, the way that notifications are managed. They now pop up in the top here rather than coming down in the bottom right. Uh, which I think coming back to these, it's a lot easier to find them again and simply dismiss them. Um, and then when you have more, they just stack up there. So I think it's quite nice. It would be good to be able to configure where you get your pop-ups for notifications. And I'm pretty sure you can do that, um, but it's, it's not made super apparent to the user on first try. Uh, also, I've got to say that one of the new features of Fedora 23 is the implementation of Wayland. You can run the Wayland display server as your go-to display server, which I think is great. 
progress is amazing. And uh, I've got to say actually that Wayland is actually a lot more system resources um, efficient than what Xorg is at this point. I noticed significantly more CPU usage with Xorg running and nothing else on a cold boot than I did in Wayland. So that's really good news to see. And I guess as support grows for Wayland as a display manager, um, it'll be good to see where that goes in the future. So just some quick numbers, Linux kernel 4.2 as you'd expect. We also now have the feature of the DNF package manager um, with the ability to do system upgrades through DNF now, which I think is great. And obviously you have the latest and greatest toolkits that are available to developers, such as Python 3.4, GCC 5, and all of that fun stuff. Before I wrap this up, I wanna say that I'm really impressed with how Fedora can pull an operating system together in the short time that it has and actually produce something that's relatively stable and rock solid. And, uh, and I think it goes to show a lot for Red Hat as a company uh, in terms of what they're capable of doing with, uh, with Linux as their core thing. Um, they take care of it, they use it, they love it. And, uh, and I think Fedora really shows what they want to see in the future for the Red Hat Enterprise Linux desktop. So two other things I need to mention before I get out of here, make sure that you have a look at Fetty because without this thing, I'd be so much more frustrated with this distribution. So definitely check it out. I'll put a link in the description below. Fetty is basically a really useful tool to help you get set up with your Fedora distribution once you've started, um, once you've installed it, because it'll make it an awful lot easier to install all that stuff that uh, Fedora really doesn't want you to install or have access to like uh, Skype and Steam and TeamViewer and Chrome and all of that fun stuff. There's a couple of themes in here as well and some tweaking tools. So definitely go and check them out. Um, because this, this tool is s simply a one-click solution for a lot of the pain points you might have when installing and using Fedora. So check that out, make sure you get it. The online in account integration with GNOME 3.18 is actually really good. Not only that, but Fedora actually gives you a handy dandy little startup wizard that actually runs you through and encourages you to connect your online accounts like your Microsoft, Google, or um, Facebook account. So it integrates really well in with the desktop and I appreciated it, it was a nice touch and have fun because I got to be honest this is probably one of my favorite distributions of the year in terms of what it's pulled off and what it's achieved that'll be all from me guys I will see you in the next episode